The story begins with two female students walking inside the campus and talking about the known genius in their academy which they had currently passed by along the way. People indeed had high expectations for geniuses. They heard that this genius guy mastered all the advanced spy programs of every profession which makes them idolize him. Since today is their awakening day, the ladies believe that this genius guy will probably switch to a powerful job. And when that happens, one of these ladies is willing to confess her feelings to this guy. 100 years ago, this world was invaded by monsters. All sorts of monsters appeared, and people began awakening skills. The fate facing humanity is one by one, switch stations, fight monsters, and level up, or else death. And geniuses always attract attention at such times. Their abilities determine the fate of humanity. Our main protagonist of this story is Jiang Lai, and he crossed over to this world 18 years ago. With exceptional talent, he has been tirelessly learning various abilities. He has only one goal, and that is to become the absolute strongest. In this academy, Jiang Lai is excellent in all aspects which made some people believe that he might awaken a hidden job class. Jobs are divided into basic jobs, advanced jobs, and hidden jobs. The strength of jobs and the difficulty of awakening increase in sequence, especially for hidden jobs. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, awakening to obtain overwhelming power. Because of Jiang Lai's talent, the principal in the academy even claimed that Jiang Lai's future was boundless and that he had never been wrong before about him. Of course, being too outstanding will always attract jealousy and dissatisfaction from some people. One of these people is Yan Zhu from the Golden Domain, and he's also one of the three geniuses of the Golden Domain Academy. His father is a powerful Golden Class practitioner, but everywhere on campus, Jiang Lai is always one step ahead. When they crossed paths, Yan Zhu asked Zhang Lai what advanced job class he was planning to awaken today. But then, Zhang Lai casually answered that he didn't know what to awaken yet. Stop showing off, or you might awaken a garbage job class. Don't blame us for not giving you face when that happens. Yan Zhu said while tapping Zhang Lai's shoulder. Zhang Lai didn't like his action so he told him to let go of his shoulder. Yan Zhu was speechless seeing how arrogant Zhang Lai was. He didn't want to remove his hand but Zhang Lai was staring at him with anger so he pulled away his hand without any words. Zhang Lai then walked away while telling himself that he'd definitely be the center of attention today since he was known to be a genius. And once his awakening fails, it would be truly embarrassing for him to know that a genius would become a laughingstock during failures. At this time, the awakening program had started on the stage. Some failed and became disappointed in themselves but professors motivated them to do better next time. There were also students who had unexpected talents that amazed audiences. One of these students is Lai Muen, and she successfully awakened as a swift archer which is under the advanced job class. After she awakened, crowds were cheering for her including Zhang Lai. Aside from her, Yan Zhu also awakened as an advanced job class, specifically a flame mage. But instead of being grateful, he was annoyed that he only got the advanced class. Yan Zhu went near Jiang Lai again just to say that the advanced job class is already impressive in the eyes of others. He whispered to Jiang Lai, saying don't think your clown-like efforts can change anything. Talent is something you're born with. Jiang Lai chose to ignore him and he walked toward the stage upon hearing his name called out by the host of the awakening. While he was on his way, the professors mentioned that they heard Zhang Lai was the one who had the best grades in this academy so they were expecting a great outcome of his awakening. Zhang Lai started the process of awakening. He was covered with an azure light and two things then popped out. These two things floated above him, and the school principal, who is also Zhang Lai's teacher, suddenly stood as he thought Zhang Lai would get a unique hidden job class since he felt a great commotion. But unfortunately, Jiang Lai only awakened a basic job class which is a mage. As expected, everyone was shocked since Jiang Lai was known as the most talented student in the academy. Yan Zhu also laughed so loud while saying that Jiang Lai deserves a basic job class. He was boasting that his advanced class was better than what Jiang Lai got. Lai Muen also cannot believe that Jiang Lai only got the basic class. She heard people around her disappointed and accused Jiang Lai as fake. Jiang Lai himself was speechless. He was standing awkwardly on the stage, hearing how people were mocking him for only getting the basic job. The crowd was so loud with their comments and reactions, while Jiang Lai at the same couldn't even move as he felt embarrassed. He felt so down, not until a system window appeared right in front of him, congratulating him for awakening a special talent, a skill that automatically max level. Jiang Lai was confused at first since he had never heard of this thing before. He even concludes that this skill might have a connection to him crossing over. He checked his skill but all of it wasn't max level. His skills are fireball spell, light armor spell, and meditation spell. 
All of it was level 1, but surprisingly, the level suddenly rose. He was shocked, especially when all of it reached the max level. He was questioned about what was happening. One thing he remembers is his teacher Pujing mentioning that after awakening as a practitioner, each profession comes with three level 1 starting skills. And after leveling up, the strength and effects undergo a qualitative leap. But leveling up skills is very difficult. Currently, there should still be people who can max out all their skills. Zhang Lai smiled knowing that everything that happened to him now was real and that his max level skills turned out to be so simple in his favor. The down Zhang Lai earlier becomes more motivated thinking that the faith hasn't abandoned him after all. Zhang Lai instantly went back to his senses when his teacher called his name and shook his body. Teacher Pujing told him not to be discouraged since he at least become a practitioner even though it's not a hidden job class. He also added that Zhang Lai's future still holds endless possibilities and that all the teachers believe in him. Zhang Lai smiled and gave thanks to Teacher Pujing and promised that he would work hard. Teacher Pujing then told him to go back to the class and he was glad that Zhang Lai was truly a commendable student. Zhang Lai went down from the stage, and he confirmed now that reality can be harsh since people much prefer to watch a genius fail compared to seeing a genius succeed. Despite that he heard the students mocking him, he still smiled as he believed he was really going to disappoint them. While he was heading back to his room, he passed by at the trial shooting range where Yan Zhu was practicing his fire skill. Yan Zhu was able to shoot one armor in one blow, and his companions were impressed by him. Yan Zhu saw Jiang Lai behind him, and he then called Jiang Lai, addressing him as an ordinary mage. Jiang Lai ignored him but then he cast a flame that blocked Jiang Lai's way. Jiang Lai then looked at him and asked him what he wanted. Yan Zhu pointed at the trial shooting range and challenged Jiang Lai to show off their skills. Jiang Lai refused and told him to practice on his own and he proudly said that he doesn't need to practice since he's already a skilled player. Quit the nonsense, who said anything about practicing? I'm telling you to show off your skills. Dare you? Do you dare to compete with me? An advanced flame mage, Yan Xua angrily replied. He poked Jiang Lai's head and told him that he was just a wimp. Jiang Lai was annoyed at him and instantly cast a fireball spell then attacked it behind Yan Xua. Yan Xua's friends were startled upon seeing the flame as it was too powerful. But then, Yan Xua belittled it knowing that it's only a basic fireball skill. But then, when Jiang Lai's skill hits the armor in the shooting range, it creates a loud bang which rattles the people nearby and startled Yang Shua. Yang Shua then turned his head around and asked what was happening. He witnessed a strong flame in the shooting range and he also witnessed how the armor flew away and shattered to pieces. Yang Shua grits his teeth as he cannot believe that the person he underestimates casts a strong flame. Jiang Lai decided to walk away with a smile on his face as he confirmed that the power of this basic level fireball spell was outrageous. Yang Shu on the other hand calls him and is still confused knowing that Jiang Lai only awakened a basic class, but cast an unexpected attack. After awakening, Jiang Lai went back home and he was still thinking about his basic fireball skill. Although its power at full level is great, just one attack almost used up half of his mana. That is why he was thinking of quickly leveling up and increasing his maximum amount of mana. As he entered his house, he saw his lovely mother Dan Kingsu carrying a tray of food and invited him to eat. While they were eating, Zhang Lai shared with his mother that he awakened as a mage. Dan was so proud of him since she believes mage is a great job. And for her, using skills from the back row in the team is relatively safer than the front row. She suddenly stood and got a box then gave it to his son saying that this was a present from Jiang Lai's father. She also informed Jiang Lai that his father was also a powerful professional. Jiang Lai was shocked upon knowing it since he only knew that his father had died long before he was born. Since he was a powerful professional, where did he go in the end? Why has he ignored us for so many years? He asked. But then, his mother doesn't know either since Jiang Lai's father only told her that he was going to the edge of the world to attend to a very important matter. She then begged his son Jiang Lai not to blame his father and she informed Jiang Lai that his father also promised to make him a mage which is why his father always emphasizes his studies in mage skills. Dan cried because of the fact that her son really became a mage. She then turned around and permitted Jiang Lai to go back to his room and check the box whenever he was done resting. Jiang Lai stares at the box and decides to open it. A golden light emerges and upon seeing the item inside, he becomes speechless. It was a professional change scroll, and by using this scroll, he could possibly change his profession to a powerful arcanist. But, there's a requirement to use it. His mage class profession strength must reach a gold level or above. Jiang Lai cannot believe that he got this item for free because of his father. In this world, professions are clearly divided into when they reach a certain level and meet the corresponding conditions. 
they can break through to the next rank. His father was one of the professionals at the gold level, but even his father was only at the gold level. Jiang Lai concludes that his father's rank might be a holy domain or a demigod for obtaining this scroll. Still, a part of him wondered why they didn't receive any news about his father if his father really had such strength. But for now, Jiang Lei has to find a way to level up and become a gold-level professional. He was also aware that in seven days, the trial for professionals in Jin City would begin. By then, their batch will also participate in the professional trial, so it's good for him to prepare in advance. The next day, Jiang Lai then headed to the wilderness and there were people talking about him knowing that he was newly awakened based on his clothes. There was a man who said that Jiang Lai was so ignorant for rushing into the wilderness to court death. Jiang Lai continued to walk but there was a lady who stared at him while the man still continued to mock him, saying that he was skinny so he surely was a mage which was only a basic class. The lady named Vivi suddenly grabbed Jiang Lai's shoulder and she also believed Jiang Lai was a newly awakened student. She offered Jiang Lai to join their team but her companions disagreed since they concluded Jiang Lai would be just a burden to their team. Vivi got annoyed at them but Jiang Lai behind her said he was fine and he refused to team up with Vivi. Still, he gave thanks to Vivi for being so kind to him. But for now, he wants to be on his own. He was about to walk away but Vivi asked him to stop and she handed a potion to Jiang Lai and stated that this potion would be useful to Jiang Lai soon as a mage. Jiang Lai then accepted it and gave thanks to Vivi once again. Vivi then waved goodbye and told him to be careful in the wilderness. Jiang Lai went directly to the Grey Forest to fight level 4 Big Brother Goblin. He hides at the tree and activates his fireball skill. He then attacked one goblin that he saw and the goblin panicked upon seeing the strong flame. The goblin wasn't able to flee as he was burned by the flame. It was instantly killed by Jiang Lai and Jiang Lai was amazed that his max level fireball skill easily took down the level 4 goblin in an instant. At this time, Jiang Lai heard some monsters from the bushes. He turned his head around, but unfortunately, lots of goblins appeared and Jiang Lai concluded that these goblins might have been attracted by the commotion just now. He then casts another skill while the goblins are charging at him. He was calm and immediately activated his light armor spell before a goblin could hit him. This armor spell is a barrier to defend him and the goblins try to break it but they can't. Jiang Lai was confident that this max level light armor spell wasn't easily broken through. He then activates his fireball spell and attacks it on the ground. The ground where he was standing crumbled and the goblins who dared to attack him first had flown away. It's like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. He uttered. The problem is that it only gives him little experience points but at least he managed to level up to level 2. Another wave of goblins heads to him so he then casts his fireball spell while confidently saying that no matter how much goblins would come, the result is still the same. He then flicked his hand to attack the wave of goblins using his fireball spell, but then, a little flame only flew. Jiang Lai was confused but it turned out that he was only out of mana already just with the two fireball spells and one light armor spell despite that he just leveled up and increased his mana pool. Fortunately, the shield from the light armor spell is still half full so he decided to replenish his mana with meditation after finishing the goblins off. He was confident that the goblins couldn't break through his defense so he got a piece of wood and planned to play with the goblins. He then jumped and hit the goblins' heads one by one while shouting that it was the power of a melee mage. But then, the wood only deals 10 damage which only makes him disappointed as he realizes that the power of a melee mage is very low. His eye was flaming and he was determined to attack the goblins even though the wood only deals 10 damage. After a long time, he finally wore down all the goblins with only the wood. His physical damage was really too low but at least he managed to wipe out the goblins and leveled up to level 3. Currently, he only has a fireball spell as an offensive magic. With his current mana, using fireball is already the limit. And during the cooldown of his fireball spell, he needs to use a light armor spell to ensure his safety. This way, his efficiency is still so low. While thinking, numerous birds flew above him and he heard the sound of a monster behind him. He immediately turned around and saw a giant axe goblin, an elite monster. He then smiled as he was glad knowing that eliminating elite monsters in the early stages should provide a lot of experience. Also, it's perfect timing for him to level up. He then activates his light armor spell, but unfortunately, nothing happens so the giant monster teases him. He then checks his system window and realizes that he doesn't have mana to activate his light armor spell. The giant goblin swung its weapon and attacked Jiang Lai but Jiang Lai avoided it. The giant goblin and Jiang Lai stared into each other's eyes and Jiang Lai was nervous thinking that he was now doomed. Unfortunately, he was attacked by a small goblin behind him. It turned out that there was another wave of small goblins together with the big one. 
More goblins charged at him so he immediately ran away from them. He calmed himself and was thinking of the three ways to deal with his current situation. First is to find an opportunity to use meditation to restore mana. But he concludes there is no chance for him to focus in a situation like this since small goblins keep on attacking him. The second way is to use up the potion Vivi gave since it can restore less one-third of the mana. And one fireball won't definitely be enough but a light spell would suffice. His last option is to retreat for now, recover, and come back to fight again. However, running away isn't really his style. In addition, if he waits for his mana to naturally recover, it would take 24 hours and during that time, the elite monster might be taken down by someone else which he doesn't want to happen. He then opened the potion given by Vivi and immediately drank it and regained half of his mana. He then threw the bottle away while the giant goblin lifted its weapon and attacked Jiang Lai. Luckily, Jiang Lai was able to activate his light armor spell on time so the giant goblin didn't hit him. At this moment, Jiang Lai was wondering how much mana he could restore using max level meditation before light armor broke. He knows that if he pushes it, his life will be like a gamble, but still, he decides to meditate to restore his mana back. The giant goblin was already furious at the fact that he could not hit Jiang Lai. It tried to attack using its weapon several times until Jiang Lai's health was slowly losing. After numerous slashing, the shield shattered into pieces but luckily, Jiang Lai's mana points reached half of his limit which is enough for him to kill the giant goblin. He then asked the giant goblin if he was already tired but he didn't wait for any response but instead attacked the giant goblin using his fireball spell. The giant goblin was destroyed into pieces and the small one flew away. The system window popped up just to inform Jiang Lai that he successfully attacked the weak point of the goblin and dealt a critical hit. Jiang Lai was panting heavily after killing the giant goblin. He then concludes that his max level meditation sure is powerful. Surprisingly, his level increased by 4 which made him level 7. He then walked toward the giant goblin hoping to loot a useful item. After searching, he obtained two pieces of black iron equipment which are swift gloves and exquisite leather boots. His current combat strength is either he kills the monster with one hit or the monster kills him in one go. But he was disappointed thinking that these beginner's equipment probably wouldn't make much of a difference and were also ugly. Still, he decided to keep it and just sell these items. On another note, judging by his current mana, he still can't cast a third fireball at full capacity. And every time, he has to risk his life to gather the monsters together. This efficiency is not even comparable to grinding monsters for a whole day compared to fighting an elite monster. He was hoping that he at least obtained other low-cost or wide-range attack spells. Fortunately, he also found a skill book. He immediately picked it up and his eyes sparkled the moment he confirmed that a novice class can learn it. He then opened the book, wondering what skill he could get. A lightning strike emerges and it turns out that the skill book is a level 10 arc lightning. And its casting time is 0.5 seconds that consumes 0 mana and can jump between multiple targets. Not just that, this skill also has a paralysis effect and damage is tied to the user's level. Jiang Lai was so excited to try it out knowing that it's a scalable skill and has a control effect. In the nearby forest, goblins were peacefully sleeping not until Jiang Lai attacked them with his arc lightning. And because of his surprise attack, all the goblins woke up and grabbed their weapons. After using an arc lightning, Jiang Lai realizes that one shot isn't enough to kill a goblin so he casts an arc lightning several times. Lots of goblins then charged at him but these goblins were electrocuted by the arc lightning of Jiang Lai. Though the damage is not as high as his fireball, the mana cost of 4 arc lightning is barely on par with 1 fireball. And the casting and cooldown time is faster than fireball, plus no need to gather monsters. It is exactly what Zhang Lai needed. Now, he has become confident in dealing with the small monsters, and his next target is the area boss of the Grey Forest. If one elite monster can provide so much experience and rewards, he concludes that the area boss must be even more rewarding. But learning from his previous lesson, before going to the boss, he decided to replenish his mana first. When he arrived at the goblin tribe, he saw the goblins sleeping but he didn't instantly notice the boss who was just standing at the bonfire. He slowly walked, trying not to wake up the goblins so he could directly go and attack the boss with a couple of fireballs. Unfortunately, he tripped. He got nervous and one goblin at the same time woke up upon hearing the noise. Zhang Lai then lifted up the stick and hit the goblin with it. The goblin was in pain and Jiang Lai thought it wouldn't make a noise. But after a few seconds, the goblin roared furiously so the other goblins woke up and immediately grabbed their sticks. Jiang Lai then runs away while the goblins chase him. 
He doesn't want to use his mana to kill these small goblins since he needs his mana to kill the boss. One goblin unfortunately hit his head with a rock. Jiang Lei held his head and looked back to the goblins while activating his arc lightning. Since the goblins don't want to stop, he believes these monsters want to fight. He then attacked the goblins with his orc lightning and all of them were electrocuted before they could reach Jiang Lai. In the end, Jiang Lai killed them all. After killing the small ones, he wondered why he didn't see the boss. Suddenly, the ground shook which he thought was an earthquake. It just turned out that the boss he was looking for had already appeared just right behind him. There was a light emerging from the boss goblin which made Jiang Lai able to see it and he was startled to see that the boss was already on his back. A few minutes ago, three men headed to this forest since they were looking for Jiang Lai. One of these men is Yan Quan, Yan Zhu's cousin. They explore the forest since they were ordered by Yan Zhu to take down Jiang Lai. The man with yellow hair was scared to continue since it was too late, and the forest was so dark. But then, Yan Quan got mad causing his companion to be nervous, and explained that it's already dangerous to be out in the wild at night. He also believes that they cannot defeat the boss if they encounter one. The ground suddenly shook so Yan Quan concluded that someone triggered the area boss. He then informed his companions that the area boss in this part of the forest was a goblin shaman and he was confident that the three of them could handle the boss. No matter who's fighting the boss right now, let them fight for a while. We'll give them a taste of our attack later. He added, at the same time, Jiang Lai believes it is the area boss he was looking for but he can sense that its momentum is not as strong as the previous elite monster he fought. This goblin shaman is a level 20 boss and it suddenly casts a magic spell causing Jiang Lai to discover that this shaman was also a mage like him. He then activates his fireball skill and immediately attacks it to the goblin shaman while saying that this goblin shaman's casting speed is too slow. Jiang Lai successfully attacked the weak point of the boss and also dealt a critical hit. Still, the goblin shaman remained alive and attacked Jiang Lai with its arrow. Jiang Lai was able to activate his light armor but the system warned him that his armor was hit by a level 5 ice arrow from the boss goblin shaman. The flame of Jiang Lai slowly dissipated but then the goblin shaman didn't see Jiang Lai anymore. It turned out that Jiang Lai ran behind the rock and hid. The goblin shaman activates its ice arrow once again and attacks the tree right beside where Jiang Lai is hiding. At this moment, Jiang Lai deduces that the goblin shaman's cloak can resist flames and probably has magic resistance. His current health was full but his mana was just a little which he believed he couldn't handle the boss anymore so he decided to replenish more before the boss noticed him. The goblin shaman attacked the trees near Jiang Lai until this boss came to the point to aim at the tree where Jiang Lai was hiding. He then casts an attack and his ice arrow strikes the tree where Jiang Lai was. Jiang Lai still continued to meditate despite that his armor was shattered by the goblin shaman's arrow. He then opened his eyes and the goblin shaman smiled for finally found him. The goblin shaman then casts a powerful ice using its wound and Jiang Lai feels that it's too dangerous for him now. Unfortunately, Jiang Lai's mana isn't enough to cast fireballs. He decided to use arc lightning knowing that he needed to fight back. He attacked the goblin shaman and the shaman was electrocuted so its casting got distracted. The goblin shaman kneeled on the ground and was affected by the paralyzing effect of the arc of lightning. Jiang Lai was glad as he discovered that the paralyzing effect of arc lightning at max level can actually interrupt its casting. He sees this as a great opportunity so he immediately charged at the goblin boss and grabbed the cloak the goblin boss was wearing. The system then notifies him that he obtained a treasure rob. He then smiled after he successfully got the cloak and now, his plan is to strike gorilla style and seize the chance to beat this boss. The goblin shaman was holding his stick and felt a little weak. He was already mad at Jiang Lai but then Jiang Lai disappeared into his sight. He shook his head, trying to find Jiang Lai but the only thing he saw was his cloak that was stolen by Jiang Lai. He saw it floating in front of him so he thought it was Jiang Lai so he activates his ice magic and attacked it to the area where his cloak was floating. He shot the tree multiple times and even attacked it with all his magic. When he stopped, he was shocked to see the area completely destroyed but no corpse of Jiang Lai. He was startled the moment he heard someone behind him asking him who he was looking at. It was Jiang Lai with his activated fireball spell. He smiled as he uttered the game over. He then attacked the goblin shaman with his flame but the goblin shaman activated a goblin defense. Still, the goblin defense shattered to pieces and Jiang Lai successfully attacked the boss goblin's weak spot and dealt critical damage once again. The goblin shaman fell on the ground with low health while Jiang Lai stated that his max level fireball was much stronger despite that the goblin had a defense. He was holding a stick as he stood beside the goblin saying that this goblin was too unlucky today for running into him. 
He then ended the goblin boss life using the stick he was holding and he leveled up by 3 levels so he's now level 10. After killing the goblin boss, Jiang Lai obtained lots of items including the wand of the goblin shaman. He also got the fire-resistant robe but it's already worn out so he feels like it's not much of use. In addition, he also learned the ice arrow technique, a level 5 initiative level, and is already max level. Knowing that this skill has such power, he was curious what the max level would do to this skill. Going back to the goblin shaman's resentment wand, it's only a bronze level wand with a magic penetration effect. And because of it, he realizes why his max level light armor technique was so vulnerable earlier. The system warned him about this wand since carrying it would make him the enemy of all goblins. With this wand, he concludes he'll be able to handle monsters with innate magic resistance in the future. All of a sudden, someone behind him ordered him not to move and hands up. It turned out that it was Yan Quan and Zhang Lai listened to his command. The red-haired man also reported to Yan Quan that there was no one else nearby so he concluded Zhang Lai's teammates were all dead. Here Jiang Lai, huh? To defeat a regional boss right after awakening as a professional is not bad. Too bad, those teammates you abandoned were probably stronger than you. Yan Quan stated. Jiang Lai then asked him how he knew his name. Yan Quan then introduced himself by saying that he was Yan Quan from the Yan family of Jincheng. He said that he had heard his cousin was bullied by Jiang Lai so he was here to avenge his cousin. He also accused Zhang Lai of thinking that the Yan family was powerless. Zhang Lai then laughed upon knowing that Yan Quan was Yan Zhu's cousin. He said that Yan Zhu was a genius at their academy so he wouldn't dare to bully him. I happen to have some small items here. Take a look and see if there's anything you like, let's be friends. He added. Yan Quan then told him that he didn't have to say anything about the things he had. But for being friends, he doesn't like the idea. All right, want to protect your hands or legs? I'll try to go easy. He said. Jiang Lai then asked him not to fight since it was the first time they met. The man with the eyeglass then discovered that Jiang Lai was using meditation to regenerate mana. He tells Yan Quan about it but Yan Quan wasn't scared and he even boasted that Jiang Lai cannot beat them since they were black iron level even if they let Jiang Lai fully recover his mana. Also, in his eyes, Zhang Lai is just an ordinary mage. Oh, so you three are black iron level professionals, that's great to know, Zhang Lai said. With his reaction, Yan Quan then concludes that Zhang Lai is thinking of fighting them to the death. He then confidently said that the three of them wouldn't let Zhang Lai cast even a single spell. But to his surprise, Zhang Lai attacked the three men with his arc lightning strike. The three were electrocuted and fell to the ground. Jiang Lai stood beside Yan Quan and said that villains die from talking too much and he's just waiting for his mana to regenerate. Despite that Yan Quan was struggling, he still cursed at Jiang Lai and he wondered how Jiang Lai cast spells so fast. Jiang Lai cast a fireball spell and said, who knows. He then attacked Jiang Lai with his fireball spell and the three screamed in pain. The three were so weak and clothless since Jiang Lai looted all of their items. Jiang Lai was so happy since he got a lot of stuff from these three men. What else to grind after defeating the area boss, robbing for more profit? He uttered while putting all the stuff inside his back. He also concludes that he needs to change leveling spots tomorrow since he remembered he only leveled up three times in this forest after killing the goblin boss. He then stood and walked away, leaving the three men clothless and smiling thinking that it would be a shame for these three men once the people would get the news that they robbed a newbie but were defeated by the newbie. Meanwhile, Jiang Lai arrived at the Rose Town. He felt exhausted since he was carrying so much stuff after he went out from the forest to this place. He directly went to the Golden Dragon Treasury, and as he entered and went in the attendant, the lady then greeted him and asked what he needed. Jiang Lai then dropped all his stuff on the table and answered that he wanted to sell all of it. The lady then asked him to wait for a moment since she needed to check the item first. A while later, the lady approached him and paid him one million. The lady explains that all of his stuff cost a total of 972,000 flame dragon coins according to the market prices, but the treasury decided to give him 1 million dragon coins. Jiang Lai was so surprised that it cost too much since his mother only earned 3 to 4,000 a month while he made 1 million so easily. He then concludes that this might be the difference between professionals and ordinary people. Because of the huge amount of money he got. He believes that he can possibly give his mother a better life soon enough. Before he could leave, he asked the attendant if there was a skill book for sale in this treasury. The lady answered yes and asked him to follow. At the same time, there was a lady staring at him. The lady was standing on the second floor and she knew Jiang Lai. She's Golden City Academy's genius girl, Mo Kinking. While she was looking at Jiang Lai, her lady subordinate informed her that everything she needed was ready. On the other hand, Zhang Lai and the lady attendant went inside the Golden Dragon Treasury Library. 
Jiang Lai then told the lady that he needed basic mage class skills and he asked the one that the lady most recommended. The lady then showed Jiang Lai all the beginner level skills that mages can learn and Jiang Lai can freely choose whatever he wants. There is a level D wind blade technique and most of them are level D ice arrow technique. Each skill book costs 600,000 flame dragon coins. Jiang Lai thought for a while and he also realized that his 1 million turned out to be so little and can only buy some low level ones for now for transition. Currently, he learned fireball, arc lightning, and ice arrow techniques. Both single target and AoE attacks are covered, and he also has a light armor technique for defense. Although arc lightning has a paralysis effect, the duration is too short so he decided to buy a control skill. He takes the level D slowdown technique, a level 10 skill that would cool down 1 second with 0.4 seconds of chanting time. Its duration is 2 seconds and costs 30 points mana. This skill can apply a slowdown buff to the target, and the slowdown effect is linked to the user's level. Since he also needed to solve his mana limit problem, he also decided to buy some supplies with his remaining money. At the same time inside the reception room of this treasury, Kinking was inside together with a fat old man. The man informed her that all the information she needed had been gathered and there was indeed a black iron tier dungeon appearing in the Gale Plains but the entrance was uncertain so they needed to spend more time researching. It's okay, as long as the entrance is in the Gale Plains, I'll personally take people to search tomorrow. Thank you, Lin, Kinking replied. At this moment, she was still thinking about Jiang Lai since she heard Jiang Lai's awakening ceremony went wrong and ended up as an ordinary mage. Also, it's impossible for her that Jiang Lai would appear in this place so she wondered what the reason Jiang Lai was here. While thinking, another of her subordinates came, which caused her to be startled. The old man asked what she was thinking and she answered nothing. If Miss can clear this dungeon, your level will definitely skyrocket. Reaching Black Iron Tier probably won't be a problem, the old man said. He also confidently said that Kinking could surpass Miss Lai of the Lai family by the time of the trial competition in a week. No time to waste, Fubo, gather Moda and the others over here. I'll lead them into the dungeon myself when the time comes, Kinking replied. The next day in the Gale Plains, Jiang Lai fought monsters using his Arc Lightning and his new wand. With the increase in level, the damage of his magic has also become higher. Now, if he goes and fights goblins again, he believes that his arc lightning can be able to kill the goblin in one shot. While thinking, a beast attacked him from behind. Luckily, he activates his defense on time. The beasts appeared endlessly. He then runs away from these beasts, and the beasts chase him. When he was away, he then sees the opportunity and casts arc lightning. He then attacked the wolves with his lightning but unfortunately, these gale wolves can actually dodge his arc lightning which makes him surprised. Since that's the case, he decided to cast another magic which is his slow down technique. All the wolves were affected. It was his first time using the skill and he discovered that it had a fast casting speed, no trajectory, and couldn't be dodged, but it could only be cast on a single target. Using it three times in a row is a bit extravagant. This time, he was eager to deal with the other Gale Wolves before they arrived. A moment later, Jiang Lai drank a potion after fighting with numerous wolves. Lucky for him he bought a lot of supplies at the Golden Dragon Treasury yesterday, and today's monster grinding efficiency of him is much higher. He leveled up from level 10 to 11, and now, he was thinking of how he could deal with this level 20 Bloodline Wolf which is an elite monster. He was hiding on the huge rocks while the wolf was searching for him since it smelled the aura of an enemy. Jiang Lai then cast a surprise attack and electrocuted the wolves with his arc lightning spell. He then charged at the wolves while casting his fireball spell and confidently said that he would take out the mother of the wolves. He attacked the wolves with his fireball spell and he successfully attacked the weak spot and dealt a critical hit. The small wolves died and only the elite left. The huge bloodline wolf was growling while staring at Jiang Lai. It suddenly roared so loud and jumped toward Jiang Lai. Jiang Lai then ordered it to behave and he also activated his slowdown spell and let the wolf absorb its effect. While it charged at Jiang Lai, Jiang Lai remained calm and didn't even move a little. Before it could attack him, the wolf suddenly paused on the ground. Although Jiang Lai doesn't know where its weak spot is, one thing he was certain of is that this wolf is hairy, weak, and it's on fire. While he activates his fireball spell, the bloodline wolf seems to be scared. He then attacked his fireball to the wolf without any hesitation and successfully attacked its weak spot and dealt a critical hit causing it to be killed. Fortunately, he leveled up by two levels and he's now currently level 13. He then looted the things he got and obtained a black iron dagger and black iron ring. 
Although they are only black iron grade equipment, fortunately, they are small in size. Since Zhang Lai was still clueless, he wondered how much he could get after he sold these items. While he was putting his stuff inside his bag, his weapon suddenly moved until he noticed that the ground was shaking. He panicked as he wondered why but upon looking in front of him, he was shocked to see more monsters coming. These monsters create a smoke of sand for running so quickly altogether. Jiang Lai immediately gets a potion and he utters, I just fought an elite monster. There's no need to retaliate against me like this. The wolves continue to dash but then, they only pass through him. He was a little nervous but then it turned out that it didn't come for him. He then screamed no as he realized that wolves are pack animals and only the wolf king can summon such a large wolf pack which means someone triggered the area boss. He immediately grabbed his wand and chased the wolves since he didn't want anyone else to get the wolf king first. In the nearby area, Vivi and her team were surrounded by some hunters who intended to steal the area boss. Vivi's team was nervous since they were outnumbered, taking advantage of the situation. What kind of hero are you? Vivi's captain angrily said. But then, the other team suddenly attacked his companion and was instantly knocked out. Although we're not really heroes, but if you blame anyone, blame yourselves for being too foolish to come to fight the boss so openly without any preparation. If I don't grab it, who will? The enemy replied. He also proclaimed that all the equipment of Vivi's team belonged to him. Vivi and his companion cannot argue anymore. The man became hopeless and begged the enemies to let them go and they were willing to give all their equipment and even the wolf king. The leader of the other team guffaws and then says that he already changed his mind. What he wants now is the lady priest Vivi and he can only let them go after he had fun with the lady. Vivi was terrified and asked her captain not to give her away, but then her captain told her not to blame him. He cried as he looked at Vivi and added that he wanted to live. He then tries to reach Vivi while Vivi is asking him not to come closer. She closed her eyes and begged and she was already crying in fear. But then, before the captain of Vivi could touch, everyone got attacked by an arc of lightning except for her and her captain. Vivi and her captain were startled upon seeing their enemy's captain electrocuted. Who dares to attack us? Dare to ruin my good fortune? The enemy's captain angrily said. He then turned around and ordered their attacker to come out. They cannot see it yet since it is covered with sand and smoke. Jiang Lai suddenly came out with a smile on his face and said, It's not even dark yet. And you're out robbing, you're so dedicated. An assassin tried to attack him but he instantly sensed it. He was mad for interrupting his words. He then attacked the assassin with his fireball skill and his strong blow of flame made Vivi's captain scared and begged not to kill him. Vivi on the other hand was surprised since she can still recall that Zhang Lai is the person she invited to join their team but refused so she just gave him a potion instead. The enemy at the same time stood still while preparing himself to fight back. In a single strike, their brother was swiftly defeated so he admitted to himself that he shouldn't underestimate his new opponent which is Zhang Lai. But then, a part of him was hopeful upon realizing that Zhang Lai is only a mage class. He then ordered his remaining men to attack. All of his men then charged at Zhang Lai with their weapons and told them not to give their enemy any chance to cast a spell. Zhang Lai activates his fireball spell while questioning why everyone rushed in so recklessly. He then attacked his fireball to the enemy while claiming that these men were really eager to die. The enemies flew away while their captain was dumbfounded seeing his men being defeated in one strike from Zhang Lai. He was sweating and he started to panic. He was so confused as to why a merely common mage skill had a devastating impact. Upon seeing his men killed by Zhang Lai, he suddenly dropped his double sword and bent down, begging Zhang Lai to have mercy. He also claimed that everything was just a misunderstanding and he even called Zhang Lai as lord. He stares a little at Vivi and tells Zhang Lai to take the lady with him and leave. He also mentioned that the Blood Rune Wolf King was residing within the cave. Zhang Lai told him to stop talking, and that he must be prepared for Zhang Lai's lethal retaliation for choosing to attack him. He then attacked the man with his ice arrow and the man got struck in his tummy, and before he died, he uttered that they, the Blood Wolf mercenaries, wouldn't let Zhang Lai get away with this. After killing everyone, Zhang Lai then looted and he was so happy that he could now use so many skills in one breath, and it also seemed like the level up brought him a significant improvement. While he was putting the stuff in his bag, Vivi walked towards him and thanked him for saving her. Vivi was blushing while she said that she didn't expect Zhang Lai to be so powerful and that she was worried for the sake of Zhang Lai earlier the moment he was fighting alone. Zhang Lai stood and carried his bag while telling the lady that what he did was just nothing since he still remembered the time Vivi helped him. He told the lady that they were now even, and he then headed to the cave, asking Vivi if she wanted to join in fighting the Wolf King. Vivi didn't answer but she followed Zhang Lai. 
Jiang Lai at the same time was drinking a potion to recover his mana points. While Vivi was staring at Jiang Lai, she concluded that Jiang Lai's age wasn't considerable and must possess some powerful and concealed class. As they entered the tunnel, they instantly saw the wolf boss, a level 25 blood rune wolf king. This boss wolf was currently sleeping when they arrived. Vivi was staring at it and since she was currently only at level 20 and just reached Black Iron rank not long ago, she wasn't sure if she and Jiang Lai could defeat the boss wolf together. She looked at Jiang Lai and saw him activate a fireball spell. Jiang Lai attacked the boss wolf with his fireball and he knew what Vivi was thinking so he told the lady that they wouldn't know unless they'll try. His flame was so strong but then, no critical damage indicator appeared so he was nervous and concluded that the wolf king may not be vulnerable to fire. When the flame slowly dissipated, the Wolf King became visible and it was mad that someone dared to attack him. He then roared, screaming that intruders should meet their end. The Boss Wolf jumped toward Jiang Lai and Jiang Lai at the same time was surprised that the Boss King spoke their language. Although the Wolf King shows no weakness to fire, Jiang Lai also senses that it doesn't have magic resistance either. The Wolf King tried to attack him but he managed to dodge, believing that he was capable of defeating this Wolf King. He then activates a goblin defense using the wand plus the slowdown technique and the wolf king flew away while its blood splattered the moment it got bumped to the defense. The wolf king still charged back at Jiang Lai despite that it was already affected by the slowdown spell, and Jiang Lai then used his light armor spell, and the wolf king smashed it. Luckily, it didn't break, but it was almost shattered by the wolf king. Jiang Lai was worried since he discovered that the wolf king's agility remains remarkable even after casting a slow spell on it. Jiang Lai thinks of another way to deal with the goblin. He cast an ice arrow while Vivi at the same time enhanced his magical offensive power. Jiang Lai then shot the arrow but Vivi was shocked upon seeing the wolf king dodged it. Jiang Lai still smiles since he already expects the wolf king to avoid his arrow. But surprisingly, the arrow was deflected and hit the wolf king back. The system window then notifies that Jiang Lai successfully struck a vulnerable spot resulting in a critical hit. Lucky for Jiang Lai that he learned this kind of technique after fighting an elite wolf and managed to discover that the vulnerability of the wolf lies within its waist. At this moment, the wolf was still alive and shook his body. It suddenly roared so loud and it was surrounded with a red aura. Vivi then immediately informs Jiang Lai that the wolf boss is going to be herself so he must be careful. Several small wolves appeared upon hearing the roar of the wolf king, and Jiang Lai on the other hand was shocked knowing that these packs of wolves were the ruffians from earlier. The wolf boss transformed into a different creature, and it turned out that it has the ability to summon lesser creatures. Vivi still gives Jiang Lai a buff and she tells him to be careful while she's assisting her slowing down the enemy and replenishing his mana. Jiang Lai at the same time activates his fireball spell and immediately charges at the wolves. He then killed it one by one and with each kill, he gained an additional 20 points of experience. Upon wiping out all the small wolves, Jiang Lai concludes that summoning a multitude of minions has inadvertently restricted the wolf's innate agility. He was standing right in front of the boss wolf, saying that he would temporarily spare its life if it would use the last skill it activates once again. The wolf was confused but then he gave what Jiang Lai was asking. It roared so loud and more wolves appeared. Jiang Lai then charged at the wolves with his fireball spell while saying that the right moment had come. He then killed the pack of wolves with his flame and he luckily upgraded to level 14 mage. He still commanded the wolf king to summon another wave and the wolf king gave what he wanted. Jiang Lai killed lots of wolves and gained lots of experience. Vivi felt sleepy already just waiting for Jiang Lai to finish. Jiang Lai leveled up to level 15 and drank potion to replenish then asked the wolf king once again to summon his minion once more. If I knew the boss had such abilities, why would I waste my time on lesser monsters? He uttered while aiming an arrow at the Wolf King. The Wolf King cannot believe that his summoned pack of wolves vanished easily and he said there's no more he can't summon. Jiang Lai was disappointed and sighed. But then, knowing that he cannot do anything about it, he just decided to reluctantly accept the Wolf King's last value and that is by killing the king himself. He aimed his ice arrow at the Wolf King and shot. The Wolf King cannot move but he utters that Jiang Lai is a devil. You're nothing but a devil. The Wolf King said is his last word and was killed by Jiang Lai. After killing it, Vivi leveled up to level 21 while Jiang Lai leveled up to level 2. Jiang Lai was satisfied that he gained 3 levels inside the cave and even got a lot of good loot. While he was picking up the loot, Vivi was staring at him and suddenly smiled while thinking that someone was actually using the boss summoning skill just to gain experience and level up. Because of this, she believes the real boss here is Giant Lai. While thinking, Jiang Lai called her and gave her a staff. He said that it was Vivi's share in helping him. 
Vivi was shocked since she didn't do much but Jiang Lai reminded her that she helped a lot by restoring his mana and increasing his magic damage. He was very satisfied with Vivi for being an excellent support, and if they encounter any danger again, he still needs Vivi's assistance. Vivi then agreed and said that being a support is her duty. Her face also blushes thinking that she's quite important to Jiang Lai. They started to walk to leave the cave but then Jiang Lai remembered that the boss dropped two skill books which he forgot to check the effects. It's called a lightness spell and a swamp spell. Lightness spell technique can increase one's movement speed and because of it, Jiang Lai realizes why the Wolf King could still move after being affected by his slowdown spell. The second one is the swamp spell, and this spell can ensnare multiple enemies at once. Jiang Lai was not familiar with this skill so he was looking forward to trying it when he got the chance. At this moment, Vivi called him to come and check what she saw. It was a ghost orchid plant, and for Vivi, although this plant is not much use for professionals, but for ordinary people, it's a top-grade medicinal herb that can cure all kinds of diseases. They can make a fortune selling this plant so she picked it up and gave Jiang Lai the other one. Jiang Lai thanked him and smiled then said that his mother is just an ordinary person. And years of hard work left his mother with many chronic illnesses so he decided to use the plant to ease her mother's pain a little. Vivi just smiled at him and was glad to know that he was very kind. All of a sudden, Vivi saw something on the walk behind Jiang Lai. She told Jiang Lai to look at it and they witnessed that the rock wall was glowing. Jiang Lai then activates his fireball spell and tells the lady to step back a bit as he intends to destroy the wall believing that there's something behind it. He then attacked the wall with his flame and small particles of rocks flew away. They both were surprised upon seeing a dungeon's secret realm after the wall got destroyed. Jiang Lai entered his hand and found out that this dungeon realm is called Level 25 Black Iron Level Dungeon Secret Realm, specifically one of the Dark Altar entrances. It looks dangerous. Should we go back and prepare first? Vivi said since she's confident that they could find the dungeon again as long as they knew the entrance's location. But then, Jiang Lai refused to go back and he told the lady to go back first if she really felt it's very dangerous. But, if the lady was willing to follow him, he promised to protect her. Vivi was thrilled upon hearing what Jiang Lai said. This time, she decided to come with Jiang Lai and promised to do her best. And she even said she'd buy time for Jiang Lai if they ran into danger. As soon as they entered, the system window of Jiang Lai appeared and asked him to stop the Dark Mage Garubai's ritual. Since a dark mage was mentioned, Jiang Lai then concludes that there is a high chance of dropping equipment related to mages in this area. He suddenly ran with excitement, headed to the deep part of the dungeon, and the lady behind him also rattled and asked him to wait. When Jiang Lai saw monsters, he then pulled the lady to hide and while hiding, the lady asked him what was going on. Jiang Lai then told her to look in front of them. It turned out that Jiang Lai saw a level 20 skeleton knight. This skeleton was riding a skeleton horse, holding its weapons, and was covered with an azure flame. This dungeon is indeed not simple. Even the regular monsters are level 20. Jiang Lai uttered while staring at the skeleton in front of them, believing that they could get an extraordinary reward after killing this kind of skeleton. They weren't aware that several skeletons were standing right behind them. The skeleton then screamed that there were outsiders and both Vivi and Jiang Lai were startled and turned their heads around. Who do you think you're spying on? Die. The skeleton screamed while charging at the two. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 2000 likes. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Until next time.